All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of All Gen Gamers. Today is April 3rd, and this is episode 88. And tonight I'm joined by John Gamester81. Hello, John. What's up, Pete? How you doing, man? Not too bad. Dude, and three more days till PAX East, or two more days. Two more days, I thought. Shit. Wait, today is. Today is. Day after tomorrow. Tuesday. <laughs> what do we what Wednesday. Well, technically, yeah, I guess three days, right? Two days. Well, anyway, I'm also John, joined by Jason. Fucking <laughs> the EMU review. And I'm not going to PAX East, unfortunately, so have fun, you bastards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as well as Jesus, Jason, the metal Jesus rocks. What's up, Jason? Not much, man. How's it going? Pretty good. And we're also joined by the Comeback Kid, also known as XX Comeback Kid XX on YouTube. What is up? And we're going to refer to you as bj or comeback i guess for this episode what's up how's it going thanks for having me great to have you and i know we've been planning on having you on for a while yeah it's been a long time coming um (laughs) we you we were one of the people we brought up in the past you know to bring on the show and it's just taken us quite a while to bring you on and you've been a part of the community for quite a long time now when did you start up on youtube again oh it's been about since uh 2007 is when i started but i haven't I've uh, been doing gaming videos in, until uh, 2008. That's when I officially started doing my first gaming video. Right on. And uh, so it's been about five years. Yeah, I remember you were one of my original like people that I subscribed to. Because you started almost around the same time as me. Yeah, yeah. I remember when you had like less than 50 subscribers. So <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah. It <laughs> and you've been a member of the community for quite a while. And uh, why don't you tell people where they can find your videos on YouTube, what kind of videos that you do on there. Um, when it comes to gaming videos, maybe, dare I say it, what's your favorite game of all time as well? All right. Um, well, basically, I do the typical YouTube thing, which was kind of groundbreaking at the time when we started doing it, but now it's kind of a, you know, diamond dozen, everybody does it. But, you know, basically top tens, uh, you know, favorite games, game collections, games I bought recently. Stuff like that. Um, Maybe a little favorite. 32X thrown in there, too. Yeah, 32X. <laughs> I mean, I do complete collections. I have Right now, I have two complete collections, working on my third. Um, I have a complete 32X collection and a complete uh, Microvision collection. Oh, wow. Nice. Hmm. Yes, and I'm working on a complete RCA Studio 2 collection. You know, despite how crappy it is, John. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I just want to say you're lucky that you grabbed that copy of Spider-Man when you did, because the price on that thing has gone up like, yeah, twofold recently. Yeah, there's actually um, there's three copies on eBay right now. How much all of them? Well, one bidding is like 100 and then the other ones are like starting bid 200 by it, now 300. Uh, wow. so, but I can remember when that game used to top out at around 100, 120. Yeah, I got mine. I'm not really ashamed to say I got it for 150. It's not mint or anything but it is complete and it is in pretty good shape so i just grabbed it when i could it's probably the most i've ever paid for a game but that's the last game you had to add to that collection isn't it for the us 32x collection yeah that's the last game were there any other ones on that system that were hard to get yeah there was uh actually pitfall was a Pretty hard to find. That game, yeah, that game's expensive too on 32X. I checked every day on eBay to find that game for like months and only one would pop up and I had to spend the money. I think it was like 50 bucks, but you know, that and uh, T Mac is pretty hard to find. Um, uh, I think, yeah, Jason EMU was playing that, I think, uh, a couple episodes ago. Oh, hell yeah. Love yeah, it. Team T Mac and um, let me see. I'm just looking at my thing right now. I remember uh, Blackthorn being pretty tough to get complete. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Black Blackthorn that goes for around fifty, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Um, what other than that, Shadow Squadron. That is that one a little. No, uh, that's not rare. No, no. Nah, that's uh, one of those CD games. It's not. I got mine br- brand new. I think for like less than twenty. Okay. Uh, Deion Sanders baseball is actually pretty expensive. People say that it's the second most rare, but uh, I'd say it's probably what would be your third. favorite favorite thirty two X game. Um, I gotta say Calibri. I think that was the yeah. first thirty two X game I found at at a thrift store. Hmm. I got it for a dollar, and that's what Ugh. prompted me to want to collect for the thirty two X. It's kind of like Echo the Dolphin, except you're playing as a hummingbird, and it's really awesome. fun. It's kind of like a shooter. 
Hmm. How many games are there for the library? Okay, I heard you guys talking about this like a couple episodes ago, and I was shouting at my screen like, "No, that's not that's not true." Because I think it was somebody. I think Jason did it as a week, weekly random question or something. But uh, I believe there is thirty six uh, games for the thirty two X. Thirty one being cartridge and five being CD games. Yeah. Do you have all five hmm. CD games too? Yes, I do. What are the What are the five I'm putting on the spot? That's you know. Um, okay. let me look. Uh, Night Trap. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, the Scotty Pippen Slam City thing, which is horrible. Yeah. Um, Corpse a, Killer. Firefighter one too, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Which yeah. is that's the only one that comes in a jewel case, and uh, the the Squadron, whatever it was called. Now, the, the Fahrenheit that you have, because I'm looking at my copy, is yours sort of like a hybrid between Sega CD and uh, like on the packaging? Is it like split yellow and blue? Yeah, yeah. I think that's the only one there is, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. It's the only uh, CD 32X game that comes in a case, like a jewel, ca- not a jewel case, but like a CD Sega CD case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> and if anybody's wanting to collect for 32X, it's not that hard. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I think I paid like less than probably less than two hundred and fifty dollars, maybe for my complete collection, because I found a lot of it in thrift stores. But I did have to, you know. Now, hold on a second them. here. You reminded me. Uh-oh. I can't remember watching your videos. You have some of the most crazy thrift store pickup videos I've ever seen. Oh, Who the yes. hell walk into a thrift store, find 32X games, complete 3DO games? Like, what the hell? What kind of places yeah. you got down there? I have some updates to that, by the way, because I know I haven't done one of those videos in a long time. But back in the day, like in early 2009, when I was doing those videos, I found uh, my Goodwill. I don't know if, like, God just comes down and drops off his games that he doesn't play anymore. Well, you could ask but, uh, Jesus. He is here. I mean, you could ask him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, got Chrono Trigger for $2. Loose, but still, you know, Chrono Trigger. Um, let's see. What else did I get? I got two RCA, RCA Studio 2s, which they're actually kind of hard to find with the little switch box. I got those for $3 each. Um, what else? Did I? I can't even remember what else I found. Uh, lot, lots of stuff actually I get Genesis there all the time for less than five bucks um, I found two virtual boy games like Nestor's Funky Bowling which I know can go for quite a bit of money one, just yeah. for the that's yeah, just probably for the, the yeah it's the third rarest on the US collection I'd I say. got it for like four dollars loose Wario uh, the Wario game on virtual boy for like three bucks uh, quite a bit I just can't remember what other games I found, but, um, you know, my Goodwill has been very good to me. So check oh. your local Goodwills and flea markets. Do you, guys, do you guys have like the half off Saturdays once a month? Uh, I don't think we do, but even if we don't, it, it doesn't really matter because our stuff's really cheap. Yeah. I'm on our Goodwill like flies on shit when they're doing that here. <laughs> half yeah. off Saturdays. Yeah. I see. I just follow John around. He's there. See- it seems like the Goodwills in Seattle don't have that much stuff anymore. They they put it all online. That shopgoodwill.com. Oh yeah. It yeah. sucks. Yeah. 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 Now who's now who's doing that? Come on now. Who's working there? Who's doing that? You know, who's behind there? What kids are going in there and saying, you know what? <laughs> I know. All, all these games you bring in here. Grandma dropped a bag of Super Nintendo games off. I mean, come on. I know. Come on, kids. That. Knock it off. Knock it off. Put hey, it in BG, the store. I have a I have a question for you. What is the microvision? Well, um, John could probably answer this question better than I can because I think he did a video on it. But basically, it's the very first handheld uh, video game system came out in I believe '79 with interchangeable cartridges. Uh, before the Game Boy, everybody thinks it was the first handheld system was the Game Boy, but this came out like ten years before that. And it's very primitive. It's like a very small LED screen with just, you know, squares to play on and uses a little knob to play with. And uh, maybe, John, you can elaborate on that. Came out, Milton Bradley made it. um, And it's just, yeah, I mean, the cartridges are kind of weird because they're they're like faces of the console. The console or the handheld itself is pretty long. It's almost like a foot long. It's it's huge. And you have to take off the face and kind of slide them in to be able to play these games. And they're very primitive in today's standards as far as graphics go. But for back then, like like uh, Comeback Kid said, you can 
change the games. So you can turn a Pong into a tennis game. <laughs> or you can t- change the tennis game into they like a Star Trek game where you have like you have to shoot things, objects passing by. Uh, and interesting trivia fact about the Microvision is if you watch uh, back, I don't know what, what movie it was. It, it was uh, Friday the 13th. There's actually an appearance in it. Oh, really? There's a kid mm-hmm. playing the Microvision in one of the, the cabins where they're in, in the woods. Make sure to follow us, the All Gen Gamers podcast, on Facebook and Twitter. Subscribe to us on YouTube and in iTunes. And don't forget about those iTunes ratings, guys. We appreciate those. And for all other info, links, and our forum, please visit www.allgengamers.com.